Hey, what's going on everyone? Loki Oren here. And before we dive into the action, just wanted to give a brief bit of context. Uh, at this point in the editing process, I realized that I got a little fast and loose in some places with the drawing of the map. Uh, you know, maybe drawing a room slightly wrong, not ex not explaining why I was doing it, or even in one notable case, uh, making a room bigger than it should have been. Uh, as far as I can see, I didn't notice anything that would have given me an advantage or a reward. If anything, it just made the dungeon look a little bit better. So hopefully no harm, no foul, but I just wanted to be upfront about that. Anyway, enough blabbering on. Let's get on with the show. Five by five with two exits. Ugh, that doesn't fit there. Because the best I can do is like what three by could go three by eight yeah you know what three by eight three by eight works for me one one two three four five six seven eight uh we can we are unfortunately only able to do a single exit uh there's there well actually no i guess we can Hang on, we can we can make this work. I'm sorta of, I'm sorta of writing myself into a corner here, but that's okay. Let's go down one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do that, and then we go over. There's the other exit. And let's encounter the room. Four by five. Four by five, the family tomb. This chamber is lined with alcoves in which appears to be the urns with family name plaques. If you search them, roll on URL one and then roll a D six. All right, so we will uh, we will search them because uh, we're not above a little tomb robbing. Family tomb, and we will roll on. URL earn loot one. Oh, jeez. Five. There's half a copper pendant worth D6 here. Half a copper pendant worth D6. Half a copper pendant worth uh, three silver three silver coins. Is that I read that right, right? Three silver coins? Yeah, wow. Okay, that's that's even less worth it. <laughs> These are starting to feel like half of our innate items just because of the frequency of them. We'll we'll have to see. Either way, because we did because we did the loot, we did the loot scoop buggy, uh, we do have to roll to see if a patrol shows up. Uh, we'd actually wouldn't mind a patrol showing up. A patrol shows up. Oh no, a patrol does not show up. Okay, so no patrol. We had to roll low for a patrol to show. Disappointing, but given the way this has gone so far, we're uh, kind of just plugging along here. The exits are archways, so we are uh, continuing, uh, continuing to go. I actually forgot to check what the exits out of the kit. Oh, shoot. All right, quick, quick rewind, quick rewind. Uh, I believe one is no, no exits are locked. Okay, am I, am I about to not be punished? Boom, not punished. Okay, cool. So I, I, I forgot to read that the columbarium's exits are reinforced doors. Uh, which we will do like that. And uh, we usually put, I believe, a little squiggle in just so I don't forget. Actually, no, I think the um, I think what we did for reinforced was, oh no, this is metal. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been a minute, but I like, I like, you know, this is probably not the most necessary thing on the planet, but it is necessary to me. We do that, and then we do pen. We do uh. Pen slash line. We do. Here we go. 
reinforced doors. They are thankfully not locked, so none of that ends up mattering. And we are able to press on. Uh, the exits out of the family tomb are, in fact, uh, archways, so no need to roll there. Six by four with two exits. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely kind of writing ourselves into a corner here, but we will make this work, so... Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. And we will put an exit there. We'll put the other exit here, and we'll just hope that... Uh... Actually, I think this isn't really going to fit. So what we will do is we will connect up this corridor. There we go. We have successfully uh, we have successfully closed closed the loop, and that will thus keep us keep us from having to try to fit more more tiny rooms. Five by six, we encounter the room. A uh, five by six is the font room, which we've already encountered. Forgot to write this down. Font room. So we will re-roll. Four by five is another family tomb. Wow, we're just rolling. Uh, we're just rolling the same stuff. That's a little, a uh, little disappointing. Wait, is the family tomb unique? No, it is not. So. Need to ditch this, put it in, put it in the proper color, which is black. Family tomb. I mean, I guess this actually kind of makes some logical sense. The family tombs are together. Uh, as before, we are gonna we are gonna loot the joint because why wouldn't we? We're not we're not super threatened right now. Six. There's some ash here, which is clearly the remains of a small creature. You find a small set of fangs. Okay. So we'll add that small set of fangs and we'll check for a patrol. Three! A patrol shows up. Hooray! We get to fight something. Feel I'm feeling pretty strong right now, so I do kind of want to be fighting something. D6. Four. An Amorotic. Which is another level two. We're just fighting all the level two stuff. That's a little disappointing. Blinded and insane, the Amaratic have a heightened sense of hearing. Guided by Navazdator, they wander to the crypt levels to avoid the persecution of the of domain guards. So they are blind, uh, blind people. Uh, I don't really have a good. Uh, don't really have a I don't I can't really think of a good image for this for this guy. So what we're going to do So we're just going to quickly uh I may I may go and fix this in post, but I can actually just quickly make a uh quickly make a uh, thing. I will be right back. There we go, an amorotic token for our uh for our use. Uh, let's let's meet the uh, meet our contestant here. Amarotic, fourteen HP worth forty four XP. So again, not not super threatening, but that's that's probably good. We're we're building up some uh, momentum here. So as we loot this urn, this Amarotic comes around the corner. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that it's an ambush and the Amarotic gets to swing swing first on the first round. Just make a note to myself, but the uh, Amarotic will swing first, kind of ambushing us as we're looting looting the urn and finding the small set of fangs. He will swing four by one is an exact strike. Wow, he just he just straight up hits us. Um. 
We have no way to mitigate that, and he cracks us for six damage. Yikes. That was a big hit. We'll, we'll reply back. Six by three. Uh, that does become five by two. He does not block on five by fives or twos. Uh, at least not these fives and twos, so we do get him for that. Uh, he'll swing first again. We're just going to give him initiative the whole time. Uh, he can't do anything with three by three. Uh, and we can we can make two by three. We can make uh, two by three. Yep. Uh, he does block one damage. So we do d6 plus one minus one. Crack him for another two back and forth. Uh, it's rare for us to be on the back foot here, but this guy has sort of ambushed us. He misses again, and we get him with 5 by 2 again. Uh, but clearly we are in better shape than uh, better shape than him as we strike back with some devastating blows. 2 by 6, yeah, this poor guy just cannot, cannot hit me anymore. Uh, four by four with shift three does become five by two, and this should finish it. Nope, two damage. Okay. Uh, let's let's make this a little more interesting. Uh, creature retreat table. Uh, yeah, we'll a it'll activate the creature retreat table. Rolls a four. The creature pulls back and you kill it with a jab, but not before it slashes back. Alright, so it, it suckers us in and gets one final hit for five damage, but we do kill it. Boom. As the Amorotic falls, uh, we feel the potion invigorating our, uh, our body starting to fade. We are uh, running out of bonus HP here. So we get 44 XP. In a PT one roll, that's a little disappointing. But we haven't fought any of the real dangerous stuff yet. Seven twenty-seven, and a PT one roll, which I will pull up now. PT one ten. Uh, let me double check that it is. It is PT one. PT1? PT1. Okay, cool. Uh, there are some zoom Zoomarius leaves and two low-quality gems. We will roll twice on... We'll roll twice on this gem table. So we get some zoom leaves. That's uh, that's worth having. Zoom Marius leaves. I didn't spell that right, but it doesn't matter. And we roll twice on the gem table, which nets us a low quality pearl and a low quality sapphire. I mean, those are those are useful. So we'll add those to the money pouch. Low quality pearl, low quality, probably more worth as sacrifices than anything else. But that'll that'll do. So let me quickly. Uh, Let's knock a bunch of this stuff onto the map layer and then knock uh, you back up to the token layer for the moment. Just want to make sure I don't accidentally shift stuff. Boom. So Rafa circling around through these family tombs and then over, uh, over back into the columbarium. There's only a single door for him to proceed through, but I think that's the play. Before we do that, though, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Slash roll, 8d6, fireball. Wow, no exits. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. Rafa takes a quick break to try to find the exit and doesn't find it. Holy crap. What is that? That's 14 plus the 4 here. That's 20d6 and not a single 6. That's, a, that's kind of impressive. All right, well... Nothing to do but proceed onward. Four by three with three exits. That actually kind of works for this dungeon, doesn't it? 
4 by 3, 1, 2, well, let's put an exit there. 4. And there we go. Nice, nice, uh, some, you know, rect it's a rectangle, but it's you know, almost square. We'll just pop open our, uh, our stuff here. And let's encounter the room. Four by four. Oh, nope, wrong, wrong table, wrong table. The dusty den, the space is empty, the stone walls covered in dust. Piles of rubbish have gathered. Someone sits in the shadows. Roll a d6. On a 3, we fight a Vanished. On a 4 greater, we fight an Emerotic. We fight a Banished. Okay. Um, I gotta remember, uh, what is it? Yellow. I'm trying to remember what the name of this token is called. I'll be right back. And I'm back. All right, here we go. So I had to, uh, I had to go digging through my, oh shoot. I uh, just shut all of my stuff that I kinda needed. All right, let's, let's get my books back open. So I had, um, I had to go digging through my uh, record to go, f or my records to go find the, um, the token I wanted, which is this this guy, who is from the Pathfinder adventure, um, Strange Aeons, the Apostles in Orphment. Uh, but we are, in fact, fighting a Banished. So let's meet our contestant, another, another new face. Banished from the domain level to the crypt levels for heinous crimes, which is impressive given that what, what's going on in the domain levels. The Banished... Uh, these torture beings are renowned grisly cannibals, desperate but unable to escape the domain of the dead. Nine x nine HP, thirty four XP. All right, combat start. So this guy lurches out of the darkness, and Rafa proceeds to smack him in the face. Scurry away on secondary ones, fours, fives, and sixes. Wow. Okay, so we do a single point of damage to him. He cracks back. Four by three just misses. Round two. Mm, prime attack. All right. So we are going to bring the pain here. Now, unfortunately... Oh, no. We do two by three. Two by three, he doesn't mitigate. So we go... We get our attack plus adding our shift to it. We get to pick the attack. So we do six damage to him. A devastating blow. And he's thrown off balance and misses on his attack. Round three, we fight back. Five by six, we can't do anything with that. He swings at us. Three by four, he can't do anything with that. Round four, shift plus one. Just kind of trading blows. Two by six uh, does become two by three. And this should kill. Yeah. Rafa just bashing his way through. Bashing his way through this, uh, bashing his way through this, uh, zone. Sorry, I'm sorry I'm repeating myself. Just brain is not firing on all cylinders at the moment. Uh, so we get 34 XP and we get to, uh, roll on body search table one, but it added minus two. So nine. Wow, that was a good roll anyway. Rolled up in the cloth are some sticks of charcoal and a quill feather. There's also a pouch. Containing, whoa, 46 plus 20 gold coins. Who the, who the heck was this guy? Who the heck was this guy? <laughs> this guy had more money on him than everyone, including the overlord on the previous floors combined. Holy crap. Our coin pouch is getting heavy with coins here as we uh, smack that guy. We also get, um, I believe it was... Charcoal and a quill feather. Um, we'll put the quill feather in here. And the sticks of charcoal in there as well. Nice. So picking over the body and finding this sudden, like, 
enormous pile of wealth. Uh, we can't help but wonder who the who the heck this guy was. Uh, but no matter now, his brains are on the floor, and uh, we uh, don't care. Exits out of here are random, so we get to roll on the exit table. We roll five by two. Reinforce doors. Okay, that's a little bit a uh, little bit concerning. Nope, wrong wrong thing. Rectangle reinforced. 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 Get our little lines through. And we will check momentarily if they are locked. We want to roll low here. Check for locks. No, nice. None of them are locked. And I do need to note down what this room was. Which is the Dusty Den, which is also not unique. Dusty Den. Cool. And that'll do it for part two. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to leave the video a like if you liked what you saw. Comment if you uh, have feedback or want to say hey. And uh, subscribe if you want to stay in touch with uh, the channel. Uh, this, the uh, net final piece of this floor, part three, will be a double feature or double length, I should say. Uh, as it just didn't cut very well into the usual four pieces. But that's for next time. Until then, see ya.